Hey guys, welcome to a property on Wilson. This is a house that we took over subject to and we are turning this into a group home. Better yet, actually a shelter for battered women. Check it out. <laughs> So this property we bought about four months ago. We've been waiting for um, conversations we've been having with a company named Community Bridges International. So people that want to get into group homes, battered women shelters, uh, halfway houses, all that stuff, a really good company to reach out to is Community Bridges International or Partners in Recovery. That is where we get most of the people who will end up living in here those people end up paying 600 to 650 dollars per bed not bedroom per bed let's go check out the property real quick we have a budget of about eighty thousand dollars to renovate this property and get it rent ready as you can see it is a weird one it is super super uh, messed up you've got holes in the concrete you've got the kitchen in order to get to the bathroom, you actually have to walk through the freaking kitchen. It is the weirdest thing ever. So we're actually gonna shut that bathroom off and create two bathrooms here because again, it's gonna be a group home. And this is what happens when you leave a property unattended, especially in a bad part of town. We left this property unattended just over the um, spring break and one week of not watching this property, somebody came in here and tore it all to shreds, looking for copper, um, looking for plumbing, looking for whatever they wanted. So, um, oh yeah, look at this. Man, they've done a lot of our demo for us, which is awesome. So I've got to get our guys in here, board this thing up, and we're gonna be, um, basically this house right here, the main house, is going to end up having about eight people living in this one first house. And each one of those people are gonna pay, be paying 600 to $650 per month. So what's really cool about this property is that we've got five units behind me. So we've got two, two bed, one baths, and three, one bed, one baths. Now, normally I would be able to rent each one of these two bed or one, bath, one bed, one baths for 600, $700 each. However, when you turn into a group home setting, you can actually rent out each room for about $1,200 because now you've got two beds. So in this first unit here, we actually have, I'll, we'll just walk through the one unit, but essentially this, this whole property when we first bought it a couple months ago um, was so full of trash, we had to bring in seven dumpsters and a tractor to take all the trash out. So the property just been neglected for a long time. Basically the way we got this deal is we bought this deal from Cody Sperber at Clever Investor. They got this lady under contract at like $450,000 and they sent the deal over to me and I said, hey, it's not a deal for me unless you guys get $200,000 knocked off the price and you guys get them contracted on a subject too so that I can just take over payments. And that's essentially what happened. So right now our debt service on this is about $1,300 a month um, with, um, taxes, insurance, all that stuff were about $1,500 total debt service. So we came in, cleared the whole property, and we're getting ready to put a big cinder block wall around the property and then start going unit by unit by unit. We're gonna be renting out again, not by the unit, by, but by the bed. So check this out. In this unit, normally this is a one bed, one bath unit. And I could rent this probably on the maximum for about $800 a month. But in a group home setting, you've got a kitchen, you've got a bathroom, and then you've got a room that can fit three people. The square footage of this, house, of this room will fit three people. Now, what's really, really cool is because in a group home setting, the government will give them the rent money and they pay it to me directly. I will be able to collect about $1,800 per month on this one unit. So a little bit more than double what I could get by renting it out to a single person. Um, so group home settings are absolutely amazing. I'll, I'll break this all down on the whiteboard in a little bit for you guys so you can see how I do the math. We'll go down, maybe do another episode or do an addition to this episode, all about what Community Bridges is all about. And you guys could reach out to Community Bridges yourself. But... Um, Let's see if we can get through here. 
What a freaking, what a freaking rehab project this is. What does it smell like in there? Oh, it smells like money is what it smells like, bro. <laughs> so, um, most people would turn this project down and most people wouldn't be able to afford this project because um, the heavy renovation costs that's involved. However, we've got private partners, private lenders that bring the money in. They come in, help us pay for the renovation. And step one of this project was just getting all the trash out. Step two of this project was getting a permit. We got a permit. We're going to build a big cinder block wall fence around the entire property, secure the entire thing, and then start working on the house. Um, it's a very, very cool project. I think this is going to be a three part series because of how long the project's gonna be. And also so many people are gonna have questions about how we got the deal and how we're filling the beds with battered women's shelter. As a battered women's shelter, who's in charge of it? Who's running it? Who's doing the cooking? Who's doing the cleaning? How can I afford to do all that stuff? How did I learn it? We're gonna answer all that stuff in probably part two and part three of this series. But today I just wanted to introduce you guys to the project and let you guys know what's available out there if you can acquire things um, subject to, I'm into this project so far, zero out of pocket. Now, when this thing starts cash flowing, we are going to net somewhere around $6,000 a month on this thing. So we're gonna break it down on the whiteboard at the end of this video. Hey guys, so this is the Wilson deal. We've already shown you what the property looks like. We are going to probably do multiple videos about that project because it's gonna be such a large renovation and it's going to have a lot of moving parts. So if you've got questions about this, Make sure to tune into video two, video three that will be coming. Right now it's April of 2020. We'll probably have another video May and another video in June back on the YouTube channel. So let's break down at least our estimated numbers and then as the project goes forward, you're gonna see how things change from an estimated situation to an exact situation. So don't worry, we'll have a ton of answers for you in the future, but let's check it out. So this is the property. We've got five apartments on the back of the property, which you guys saw in the, in the previous video. Actually, it's the same video. We just clipped <laughs> over here, guys. Gosh, damn it. So um, this is also the large property, okay? So what I did here is I allocated how many people at what rate I will be getting per bed on each individual unit. Same thing here on the big house, we'll have six, nine people at 650. So we're gonna break it down and then come back to that. But I wanted to at least show you what that meant. Purchase price on the property is 250, okay? My entry fee was 135 on top of that 250, okay? So the 250 we took over subject to, originally the deal was sent to me from another wholesaler and they tried to sell it to me at 450 in a, tra a traditional cash purchase. We went back to them and we said, we would not buy that property unless it had a mortgage in place. We do not want to deploy cash into that deal outside of the, the typical renovations and stuff like that. So about two months later, they couldn't sell the property to anybody else. They came back to us. We taught them how to structure it subject to and told them exactly what we'd want. We visited the property again and we ended up striking a deal with the seller that we took over the existing mortgage at 250 and their payment is $1,700 a month. Let me get specific here. The interest rate on that is 3.625. So pretty good interest rate on that 250, okay? Now that's what's remaining on the mortgage. That is what the mortgage payment currently is. Now, the entry fee, we're gonna break this down. My entry fee was a total of 135, and it might go up depending on what our total renovation is, but this is what we allocated so far. So we went and raised private capital for that 135, so we have a private investor. We put that investor in second position at 10% interest, okay? 25,000 went to the arrears. This seller was actually behind on their mortgage. We caught up their mortgage with that $25,000. We then paid the wholesaler who brought the deal to us 23 grand on a nearly impossible deal. Nobody else wanted that. They still made $23,000 because they went back and restructured that as a subject to. Seller actually walked away with $10,000 even though they were behind 25 grand on their mortgage, they still got 10 grand. We then closed escrow, that costs money obviously, and then we've allocated $65,000 to the cleanup and renovation of this property. That's probably going to take us another three months to not only renovate, but start filling the property with people from 
Community bridges. International. You guys can look them up. They are a nonprofit funded by the government. And what they do is they take people who are going through a hardship and they help rehouse them. And then they guarantee a bed fee to me. So on our facility or our group home, we are going to be a non-licensed group home. Okay. I also own assisted living where I am licensed. And I also own behavior health where I am licensed. You guys follow me on Instagram or Facebook. You'll know that I own those types of homes. We have decided we want to do more group homes that don't require all the heavy licensing, the over, the oversight from the government and all the issues with the red tape associated with behavioral health and assisted living. So this one, we decided to do group homes and we'll do more videos about what groups group homes are and how to get into this. But I would check with Community Bridges International and find out how you can get them to send you patients and how to set this type of thing up. I call them patients because they all are kind of going through something. We need to fix something in their life. Battered women, right? They're fleeing from a bad situation. Maybe it's a, a an adolescent that lost their parents, but the they had no they have nowhere to go. Otherwise, they would be homeless. So we are sheltering them in this property. So check this out. I could have traditionally we could have rented this property out at about five hundred dollars per unit. So five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. $500, $500, and $500. Then I could have rented this out for about $1,800. So my total on a traditional rental would have been, uh, what is that, $2,500? So I'd be at about $4,300 is what I could have rented this out for with traditional renters, okay? It's kind of in a lower income part of town. It's on the outskirts, so the rents are not that demanding. So I could have rented this out for five, $600 a unit plus the big house at 1800, but converting it to a group home and having the state pay us 650 per bed, I can now have three people in this unit. So this is a two bed, one bath, two bed, one bath, two bed, one bath, three bed, one bath, and a two bed, one bath. So I now can generate $1,950 per unit rather than 500. And then on the big house, I can generate $5,800 in income on a, uh, that, ho that main house will be, end up being a five bed, three bath, okay? Now, why do I wanna keep it at nine? I probably could fit closer to 13 or 14 people in there depending on um, how we, I lay out the bedrooms, but I wanna keep it under 10 people because I don't want to have to have fire sprinklers in that property. So if you go to 10 or over, you now enter into a world where you have to have fire sprinklers and I don't want to do that. So we kept it at nine and under. However, I'm going to generate $5,800 a month here. Plus we're going to generate another, um, what is that? That is, well, our total, let's just go through the total. Our total is $15,600 is what my income is between all the units. That kind of beats out the $4,300 by oh, nearly quadruple, okay? It is a tremendous amount more income utilizing this as a group home. Now, let's break that down. My 135 at 10% interest cost me $1,125 interest only. Accompanied with the $1,700, you can see there's my first lien, $1,700, my private lender at $1,125, I then have monthly maintenance that would be landscape maintenance and other things like um, garbage service and stuff like that. I then have utilities and then I have miscellaneous for food and some of those types of things. Now, the state does give us, um, what is it called, uh, food bank vouchers. So all of our people here will actually end up getting free food, but I still have to buy some cleaning supplies and I have some miscellaneous expenses. And so I have, you know, insurance and extra things that we just don't want to break down here because it would just make this whiteboard full as I just put it down as miscellaneous. So my total cost to run this facility is $9,125 a month. And at $15,600 a month in income, I take that 9,000 out. I now am bringing home $6,475. Now, that's just a projected dollar amount. As we facilitate and we fill this how all these units you're going to see the people and the personalities and all the moving parts involved in growing and building out a group home 
So you're gonna have more videos coming up. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video. Make sure you ask questions actually on this video so I know what kind of answers to give you in, in series, or, uh, part two and part three of this particular real deal series. I wanna make sure you understand how to do this because this is a very high level type of exit strategy. We also have group homes where they're only three bed, two bath homes, and we turn those into group homes and cash flow at a much higher rate than a traditional rental or Airbnb or what have you. So please guys, subscribe, like, notifications. Also follow me on Instagram. You guys see my daily activities over there and ask questions in the comments below so I know how to make video two and video three in this series. Now allow me to reintroduce myself, they call me J-O, A to the easy E, and duh, huh. Know that we undefeated, y'all are beneath them speeches, trying to air a grievance, but his lines are overhead, better check the air.